Hey guys, so today we are going to test out the MPPT solar charging of the Amprura power station. Now you guys may have seen this in another one of my videos. This is the power station here. It states on the label it has 60 volts upper voltage. Now in the manual it states it has 150 volts open circuit for PV. Now I'm not saying the company told me so, but the labeling on the unit itself had to be put at 60 volts due to certifications that they weren't able to get in time at the release of this power station, which means that the cost savings to you is going to be huge if this works at 150 volts. Now I have an array beside me here. This is six 310 watt solar arrays. Uh, the three are in series and then they're paralleled into two. So just under 2000 watts of solar and we are going to test to see if the open circuit voltage can at least handle 100 volts open circuit. So I'll bring you in here and I'll show you uh, my setup here. So I'm going to test my PV now. You see there we have 112.2 volts. So this is going to be a great test. And something else to correct, you can actually connect to this uh, remotely. So right now I'm connected via Bluetooth. Uh, you have to hook up to Wi-Fi in order to get any updates or anything like that. Now let's see what happens. Hopefully we don't get a smoke show. And a big cloud just came over. Okay, so I see 358 watts. Oh, there you go. You can see it on the app as well. Okay, this, this is going good so far. Now I just need to wait for that big cloud to go by so we can get some good sun. That figures, as soon as I get set up, a big cloud rolls in. Now another thing to keep in mind is these panels have been sitting here, I haven't cleaned them, I haven't done anything, so I'm not expecting to get close to what the actual panels can produce. We've got almost six, oh, 866. So we're taking the upper voltage. Okay, I'm going to wait for those clouds to go and hopefully they stay away and then I'm going to start up the camera again. Okay, I think it's poking through the clouds now. 666, 674, oh here is good sun. 1634, come on show up on the app. There we go, 796. I got, I've seen 1400 on the display. Now the app is a little bit behind, maybe it'll pop up. No, so oh, I didn't catch it for you guys on the uh, screen recording, but I did see it on the display for a second. Oh man, that's a big, uh, that's a big set of clouds. So I got 1,858 watts right now and it's holding. This unit is hot. I got to get it in the shade. Probably not too good to have it next to a combustible item. 1792. So that's great. So this actually has 2,000 watts of solar. Recharging time, 55 minutes. Oh, there we go, 1,821. So we're actually doing it. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this and let it get to 100%. Hopefully with the scattered clouds, we don't get any rain. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave this run, see how it goes. Okay guys, we're back here in the shop. We're about to perform an efficiency test on this. So we had over 60 volts as labeled. So the owner's manual is correct. You can do up to 150 volts open circuit for your PV. With the uh, inverter test, if we get, let's say in the low 90s or even in the high 80s, that's gonna be really good for this inverter. So for this test, what I'm gonna do is plug in two battery chargers, which is gonna charge up my larger server rack battery bank. So these two here are new to me. I'm gonna be testing these out as well. These are 18 amp waterproof chargers. And I'm gonna test also to see if you can actually hook two of them up together. So I'm gonna have over 2000 watts. So if you're plugging this into a wall outlet, it's gotta be at least a 12 gauge wire, which is a 20 amp breaker. It's gonna be over the 15 amp breaker size. So if you are gonna do dual connection with uh, these chargers, you're gonna to wanna to at least have a 20 amp breaker. This unit here, has 20 amp sockets, so I can plug two in. I have two watt meters here, and these are the two watt meters. So right now they're showing kilowatt hour, and they're both zeroed out. 
So at the end of this test, I can add these two together and see what the efficiency is. And these here are the waterproof chargers. I'll leave links in the description below, but they're 18 amp, 58.4 volt waterproof chargers. So these are great for golf carts. Okay, battery charger number one. And you can see there we have 10 watts, 20 watts. Now let's plug in the second one. And the second one is on now. You can see we have 10 watts. Let's get a clamp meter and check the cables going into the battery. Okay, and cable number one. We're getting 16.36 amps. And cable number two, 16.48. So that is in with the accuracy of this clamp meter. And combined, oh, we have too much. Oh, there you go, look at that, 32.2 amps going in. These are actually quite nice. You can see we have a light right here that shows charging, and I'm sure if it gets to full, then the green light will come on. But this here will probably run out of power before we actually hit that full mark. We're gonna let this run and see what the efficiency is on this inverter. Okay, the unit has just shut down and my display has gone out and my second display has gone out. And there you go. The unit has completely shut down now, so to get the display back on, I'm gonna plug in the EV charger and put some power back into it in order to see what our capacity was. Okay, I can hear some clicking. And we seem to be starting back up. Okay, we have 1%. I'm gonna see if I can turn the inverter back on or not. Okay, I may need to charge this up a little bit, like to 5% or something, before the inverter will come back on for the output. Okay, so on the efficiency test, on one meter, we have 1.638. On the second meter, we have 1.702, which comes out to 3.34. So that's 3.34 kilowatt hours, which works out to 87% efficiency. So the inverter on this unit is 87% efficient. Now let's see, okay, and the AC turned back on. So there you go, there's the testing of the Amperura. So we got 87% efficiency out of the inverter and we were also able to achieve over the 60 volts that are labeled on the device itself. And you can follow the manual that says it has up to 150 volts open circuit. And also the app is actually Bluetooth active as well. So if you have Wi-Fi available, it will go to the Wi-Fi, I believe is default. But if you are out in a remote location without Wi-Fi connection, you can actually connect to it with Bluetooth. So overall, I think this unit and the price point that it's at is perfect. So hopefully they keep my coupon code of $400 active and you guys can get some savings from the links down below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe. As always, thanks. Bye.